that's what hurts. He's like, you're sad. And he's like, yeah. mommy, mommy and Ryan did something to you. And that hurts. Oh. A website called All About the Tea. I told All About the Tea that during the fight, Hi, Teacups. Um, this is an exclusive interview with Anthony Lindsay. Anthony is a former best friend of Ryan Henry of Black Ink Crew Chicago. Now, just to give you all a little background, Anthony and Ryan have been friends for over 11 years. And Ryan betrayed Anthony by sleeping with the mother of Anthony's son, who was also Ryan's godson, while Anthony battled cancer. Anthony, thank you so much for doing this interview. I know you and I spoke for a while, and I know it's an emotional time for you, and I appreciate you doing this and being so candid. So thank you. you're welcome. Why don't you start and just tell them, how did you find out that Ryan and Nina were sleeping together. Well, um, I was at her house and she was in the bathroom and my son picks up her phone and he says, I know mommy's cold. And I'm like, no, you don't. And he said, yes, I do. So I was like, show me. He shows me. He opens her phone. When thinking about going through her phone, I don't go through her phone. And I went to the text, and the only thing I did was put Ryan's name in because I had suspicions. But I thought it was something wrong with me to be having suspicions. I'm like, he's the god of my son. I mean, why do I have these suspicions? So I never said anything about him. But the first thing I did was type in Ryan's name, and a whole conversation came up. And what was that conversation like? I mean, it was disturbing. Um, like when I was August the 11th and on um, August the 11th, she was sitting, she had moved to a new location, a new address. So she was sending her, him the address to where she lives at. And it, it, that, that day sticks out. As you can see, I remember the day because the next day we went on a father and son trip with our boys to Wisconsin Dells. We had a cabin for the weekend. So he had sex with her the day before we even go to a father and son bonding weekend. And I see, you know, texts about um, eating coochie. He's only, you know, and the stuff he's saying, I mean, I know it. I can confirm it, you know, like he's only, you know, I'm, he's not, you know, done that to so many women. But hers was so fresh. He had just got the shower. He couldn't resist it, you know, and things of that nature. Um, one series of texts I'm reading, we, again, it's another family outing, but this time it's with his family and my family. And in those messages, he's like, Hey, I won't even be around Rachel. And then she's like, yeah, I don't want Ant to be all in my face. We were going on a boat, a boating, um, outing. It was just, you know, a private boat. Ryan had rented a boat for, um, like six hours at um, one of those hundred foot yachters. And it was just all family. So of course, you know, we were all there. And they were making all these type of, you know, comments and joking and, you know, at my expense and at Rachel's expense. And I beat cancer October the 23rd of 2019. That's the day that the doctor actually called me and told me that I had actually beat cancer. And we had a small get together at Ryan's house. And I'm actually giving a speech thanking all of them. Ryan is on my right side. And she's on my left side. And I'm giving a speech thanking them for supporting me, you know, for beating cancer. And if you look at the video, I never noticed it before. But if you watch the video, you look at Ryan's face, I, I can tell he's disturbed. And I'm saying that, you know, that was something to make it better, but I can tell he's disturbed. 
And I haven't had a verbal conversation with Ryan. Um, we've text. He won't. He refused to answer my uh, FaceTime calls. Um, but he did admit it. She's admitted it. He never apologized until I told him. I'm like, man, you want arrogant motherfucker. You still haven't even apologized, you know. And then he did apologize. And everything he tells me is off the window because, like I told him, if it happened once, say y'all was drunk, you don't know what happened. Even twice, and y'all after that second time, we knew we were wrong and we hated it happen. Trust me, man. Like that's my brother to me. She's my son. The mother, of my son is everything to me. I was willing to. I would have been willing to like work through that, but you guys had sex probably like. I think she like over twenty times, um, a year and a half, and you all those messages and all those texts. Not one time did anybody say, "Like we should stop this," you know. And actually, three months ago, I was diagnosed with depression from the cancer, from fighting cancer, and I was it's like a. Uh, I think PSTD, something of that nature, from me battling cancer for three years. And, you know, everything my body went through, you know, um, all the, sur you know, I had surgery, I had treatment, you know, and things of that nature. And I only told Ryan and Nina that I, because I'm, again, I'm a black man and I'm an older black man. And depression, mental health, we know we, I was just, I'm bred. Well, you know, I always have to be strong and I'm always trying to be strong. So I didn't want anybody to know that I was battling depression because I, you know, I looked at it as a form of weakness. So I only told them too, because I have a very small circle to begin with. Like those are my two go-to people for everything, for everything. And so I only told them too. So you guys knowing I'm battling depression, I'm on medication and you still do this. Like, even then, when you found out I had to, you know, I had been diagnosed with depression, it's like somebody could have cared enough about me to say, you know what, man, what if he finds out about this? Man, that might push him over the edge. You know? And that didn't happen. It's that, that still wasn't it. So it was nothing that could make them stop doing what they were doing. It's like, what did you guys think was on me? Did you want to be a family? Like, what, you know? And like I told them, I made you my son. If I'd have died from cancer on my on my deathbed, they would have been there. He'd have been on one side of me, she'd have been on the other side of me. And as I'm dying, one of the things that would have helped me die in peace is knowing that he has my son. And he's gonna look out for my son because he's my brother for one, but you his godfather for two. So I even said, I asked her that. I said, you guys would just, y'all would just let me die. And like, let me go in my grave blissfully ignorant to the fact that y'all been fucked, sorry, having sex for a year and a half. My son's godfather. Like, when somebody bestows that on you, that's something big. I have two kids. My first son doesn't even have a godfather because I, I don't even trust people like that. But that's that's basically the gist of it. First of all, let me say, you know, praise God that you you beat cancer and you're a survivor. Um, this, is, this is a lot to take in. Um, so let's go. Let me backtrack a little bit. Okay. You said that there was a video when you beat cancer, you guys had a celebration and you were cheers in the video. You said, now that you look back, you notice that Ryan maybe didn't appear to be as happy for you no. that you beat cancer. Okay. whole journey man like today to be cancer free like it's crazy like yeah. like I always believed in my heart that I was gonna beat this shit this nigga even when I didn't believe it hit like nigga for Caden for Caden for Caden for Caden for Caden 
but the, the, the doctor called me and said, um, it's zero detection. I'm like, huh? <laughs> 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 zero detection. I'm like, so it's nothing? He's like, nothing. I'm like, you talk zero. I'm like, zero. He like, you want to say zero, nigga? So, man, this is the band. Zero, man. This the, I appreciate the people that lit me up. Because I couldn't hit it without support, man. I'd have gave up, I swear to God. I mean, I know. I have not, like, to be honest, I don't have any. Let me just say this real quick. Nina's the mother of my child. My son loves his mama dearly. I love my son dearly. Wish no ill will on her, period. I am. He's my brother at the end of the day. Rather, he made his actions that he made. I still love the man as a brother. I wish no ill will on him. But when I says that he did, did he care I'd be cancer? Yeah, I know he cared I'd be cancer. Like, I would not even, you know, stand him that he didn't. But he his joy on his face is not there. And I know it's because. He's dealing with the fact, like, because I can't see her face on the video. I only can see a side profile of her, but I can see his face directly. And I know he's saying to himself, why am I doing this man like that? Like, I know that's what he was doing. So you saw guilt on his face? I saw guilt, yes. That's deep. Looking back over the years, because you mentioned that you, Ryan, Rachel, your kids, it was one big happy family. You told me that you all went on family vacations together. You said you didn't even take family vacations unless it was with Ryan and Rachel and the kids. Yes. Looking, um, back, looking back on those times now, do you recall instance, instances where... Rachel, I'm not Rachel, Ryan and Nina perhaps maybe gave each other a certain eye or acted funny or acted strange. Did you have any clue? I had, uh, I had no clue. I had a, like, I'm a vibe, man. And the vibe hit me. But I, again, it made me question me that I was being insecure. You know what I mean? It made it made a question me. And one time I did bring it to Ryan because um, Nina and myself had a falling up at nine Mac and I was a billion percent like I didn't do nothing. But he was so much on her side. And I said, man, you act like you like her, bro. And he got so upset with me. So upset for me saying that. So yeah, I look back on that day. I look back on March first, my birthday when me and Nita got into it and she made like a reference to it. Like you worried about that? We were drunk, but it was like she mentioned Ryan. I'm like, so what? Are, what are you saying? I don't know my friends. You, I need to watch who my friends are, and you know things of that nature. But she, you know, she retracted it, and it was never revisited. But the times that I brought it to both of them, one, one to her, and one to him, the way they reacted, it really did make me feel like, man, I'm really insecure. I'm tripping. You know. But it, but that that wasn't the case. I was not tripping. Yeah, I was absolutely right. You were absolutely right. Now, did you work at Nine Mag? No, I did not work at Nine Mag. Um, I do various jobs for Ryan. Like, um, I don't have a job title. I mean, um, sometimes I'm his booking manager, his road manager, booking manager. When he goes out of town, I go and make sure the business is okay. You know, I come back. Um, I might close a couple of deals. But no, I don't have a, a title. It's just like Ryan always took care of me. Right. You know what I mean? I always mm -hmm. trusted Ryan. I like if I book something, I didn't need to I know he's gonna give me more than ten percent, you know. Like mm -hmm. like I, I can't lie, he actually he always took like when I I mean when I had cancer, if it wasn't for Ryan, I don't know what I would have done. You know what I mean? Because like at a certain point I wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Um it was it was a few things that Ryan, yeah, Ryan definitely helped save my life, and that's why it hurts even worse. Like that's why it's he did, he did, yeah, he did everything a brother was supposed to do. I've, I mean, I, I bear like, I bear man, I bear my soul to Ryan, unlike anyone else, because that's the 
how close I felt our relationship was. I could tell him anything and he could tell me anything, you know. Um, Rachel, I, I never would look at Rachel like that. Her kids call me uncle. They call my brother, you know, my son, that brother. I could never do that. I could never do that, period, ever. The betrayal is, is deep. It's cutting deep for you. You told me that recently um, you reached out to Rachel and you broke the news to her because she didn't know. She found out through you. Well, How I mean, did that go? How did that go down? Oh, shit. I called Rachel right when I found out immediately. I, I called Ryan first. He didn't pick up. Called him like three times. He didn't pick up. And I didn't know maybe my son's mother had texted him from another phone and told him because we talk every day. So I put a message on, on Instagram. It was like, and I added him. I'm like, you having sex with my son, with my son's mother? Um, your godson? And you can't pick up now? And then I deleted it. Because again, I didn't even want, I was embarrassed. Like I had did something. I didn't want anybody to know. And so I called Rachel on FaceTime with Nina phone in my hand. And I said, Ryan and Nina has been fucking. And I don't know if I could use that word, but um, don't having sex, but I said the F word. And then I flipped the phone, the camera over and showed her Nina's phone. Just so she, cause she's like, you liar. I'm like, nah, here you go. And she was hurt. We ended up getting off the phone. I ended up leaving. I was hurt. I went to the store. No, I went to actually pick Rachel up. Rachel was at the gym. I went and picked Rachel up. We went to the liquor store. Rachel does her wine. I bought me a bottle of tequila and a bottle of Moet. And we drank the bottles together and cried together. We cried together. Mm. I respect Rachel. This doesn't, you know, this is not a reflection of her. Our, you know, hopefully our kids can still see each other, with, you know, through her and I. That's good. I'm glad that that relationship at least hasn't been damaged because of the choices that Ryan and Nina made. Now, you mentioned that Ryan has not apologized to you. He did apologize after I mentioned it to him. I'm like, damn, that's arrogant as fuck. You haven't even said sorry to me, man. And then he's, you know, he did say he's sorry. Do I think he's sorry? I don't know. Do I think she's sorry? I mean, she's, she's, you know, Nina's been crying, calling me. She's hurt, I think, but I can't say because I caught y'all. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Had I not mm -hmm. caught them, I could believe everything. And no message, like I said, I, if I even read one message to one of them saying, hey, this would damage this dude so bad, so bad if this gets out, man. Let's stop this, man. He he, man, he, he, he loves you. And like, because they both can say that to each other. He loves you. He can tell her I love her. And she can definitely say, Ryan, he loves you like a brother. We shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing this. Neither one of them ever said that. Not one text message. Not one of them. So... You didn't I witness the remorse between them, so it's it's hurting even more. Maybe, I mean, like right now, she's not talking to me because, like she she's tired of talking about it. And like I saw a therapist yesterday, and a the therapist actually said the guilty party has to listen to it a million times if that's the, if I need to express myself. You know, mm -hmm. that's the words of a therapist. Yeah, and she. It, it hasn't even been a it's just been over a week and you're tired of talking about it man i'm fucking hurt i'm tired of hurting you know and then he says you know very arrogant things like oh you want to run to the internet for sympathy oh, i'm not running to the internet for sympathy you know if you look on my page i would never even before today i never even said anything about it you know i didn't mention it period i put up a post of me and rachel with us standing back to back, saying that she's my sister no matter what. That's it. You you won't find me saying nothing bad about Ryan. You want me 
find me saying nothing bad about Nina. Because what what is that going to do? My my anger is for my kid. My yeah. son loves my son loves Ryan. I can't deny that at all. My son loves Ryan. You know. Yeah. And now, like I feel my son can never see you again. Like all the times I see you picking my son up, holding my son, but you having sex with his mother, it makes me wonder. Like, did he ever go over there? When my son was there, like, of course my son's not going to think it's a big deal because it's Ryan. So, you mm -hmm. know, I have to deal with all that in my head every day. So when she tells me she's tired of talking about it, you know how many questions in my head? Like, every time I talked, like, I feel like every time I told him me and Nina was having problems, I feel like that's when he would go and console her. You know what I mean? Like, or if he asked me where I'm at, what you doing tonight, um, it, it was only to find out, you know, is, is she going to be available? Am I going to have Caden? You know what I mean? So I don't know what, what's real no more. The only thing I know is real is that I'm hurt. Now, and you mentioned to me that Ryan was so upset that he wanted to fight you. Man, he said he would kill me, actually. You know, and yeah, he want to fight me for telling Rachel. Like, I guess whatever him and Rachel are going through, now he blames me for it. Instead of blaming yourself, because as you never put yourself in that situation, I, I would have had, I would not have had anything to tell Rachel. And I don't know what the fuck he figured, like, you could wreck my life, and I'm still supposed to just be loyal to you, protecting yours? Exactly. Like, what they do to that, bro? nowhere that that's not the rules that's not he's not playing by the rules um you know even on the show ryan had mentioned he only has loyalty to his children no one else so i'm these events his actions don't shock me but to think that he i would never imagine he would go this low best friend of 11 years you're battling cancer my son's got help father yeah like, battling, battling depression and now this betrayal of your best friend sleeping with the, the mother of your son while you're battling cancer, while you're fighting for your life. I never thought Ryan Henry would go this low and this is as low as you can go. Man. I mean, no, nah, it's nothing else he could have did to me. Nothing. And I love Ryan kids. Uh, I, you know, I would die for his kids. And I mean, I would die for him. Mm-hmm. You know? Wow. That is deep. So, so how are you, how are you, I'm sorry to cut you off. How are you coping with all this? Are you seeking help? Are you, you going I to seek help? I am, I do have a therapist, but when you say like, like, it's so hard for me to cope with it because my circle is so small. Like right now, if it was anything else, I would be going to, I would be probably going to Ryan or I, I would be going to Nina. Those are my two go-to people. So now I'm dealing with one of the biggest, and I can't say the biggest battle because my biggest battle was cancer, but I, I definitely can say my second biggest battle is this and the two people who I would look for for comfort, look for to help me, look for to help me through this. It's the two people that's doing it to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your support system and um, everything you relied on at your lowest point is just a lie, a big fat lie. They weren't, you know, sincere and they truly didn't have your back and that's that's a shame. That's a shame. I mean, if you, you can't trust your best friend, someone you consider family, who can you trust? And to deal with trust issues, like, battling depression is, is crazy. Like, I already can't sleep. I haven't slept in a week. I haven't slept in a week. And it makes me, you know, I, I know it's not my fault, but it still makes me feel weak that I cry every day, multiple times a day, because I'm, I'm messed up. 
all messed up, man. I understand. I completely understand. We, I need to have you come back and we need to do a part two. I know it's getting late there and you have your son. So I don't want to keep you much longer. Um, why don't we wrap things up and end this interview now? Okay. I'm going to give you a call um, after we get off and um, we can talk off record. Okay. At the end of this. Okay. Thank you so much, Anthony, for All joining right. me this evening. And you take care of yourself. Please. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. If you or someone you know is in emotional distress or suicidal, please call 1 800 273 8255.